everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine Plant-Based Fitness Nutrition. Each week we go over some studies, talk with amazing guests, or talk about different topics and subjects that have to do with health, fitness, nutrition, supplementation, and sometimes we even dive deep into the latest in the research. So this one is no different. <laughs> We're going to be talking about uh, fitness and why it's important and specifically resistance training. So there's lots of ways you can get some activity and you can walk, you can go for a swim, you can go for a bike ride, you can do yoga, Pilates, do a pickup game of basketball. There's tons of way to get great exercise and it's all good for you. So I'm not knocking any way, personal way of exercising or getting exercise and it's all good what i do want to show is the importance and the effectiveness above and beyond those other forms of exercise that resistance training adds that some of those other exercises may not still great to do still important to do your diet still important to Make sure you're getting good, clean air, you're de-stressing, getting good water, getting some good sunlight, getting outdoors, and having healthy relationships. All of those are important to overall health. I'm not taking away from anything in, the, in those categories. What I do want to do is address what the research shows is the benefits of it. Now, a study just came out, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it up on the screen here. It's the first study we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a bunch of them, actually, here. Um, so this first study right here, you can see it on the screen below. Uh, before we get started the study, let me just quickly say this video is for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Thank you, FDA. Okay, so now we got that out of the way, let's talk about this, this study on, it's actually more like a paper on uh, the health benefits of resistance exercise beyond hypertrophy, that's muscle gains, and big weights. So most people think, oh, resistance, that's using heavy weights. You don't have to use heavy weights. Resistance, <laughs> as my uh, humorous title, join the resistance. Resistance is uh, merely talking about resisting. So when you're pushing against something and there is a resistance, that causes the muscle to strain or to use up energy, to engage, to strengthen itself. So it can strengthen the body. It can, it, it, it can uh, get the body to increase its metabolic function. So you can have more mitochondria in the muscle cells. You can have more oxygen going to and from the muscle cells. You can have a, a better utilization. Exercise increases insulin sensitivity, reduces your risk for diabetes, cancer, heart attacks, and stroke. So all of these things set up a cascade of metabolic benefits. Exercise even benefits our microbiome. Did you know that exercise can actually shift your microbiome? That those, the microbiome, uh, kind of portfolio, the different diversity is much different in peak athletes than it is in sedentary people. Actually, with overweight people, it's even more different. So just by doing exercise, you can even increase your gut health. So it's almost touching every single part of the body, the brain, the internal organs, um, your overall health, your ability to process food and utilize energy better across the board. Now, I think some of us already know some of this, but it's interesting to see the effects in there. Let's um, let's go ahead and uh, pull up the first image from the study. Here we go. Um, so the first image is showing you some of the different benefits of resistance training as opposed to um, just uh, aerobic training. So you're going to see resistance training in most studies as RT for resistance training. That's weights or bands or machines. All of those are resistance forms of training. Uh, so it causes the muscle to resist or to have to struggle or use force against it. And then there's the aerobic training. Now both are 
good, but they have different health benefits. And I'll get into why that's important in just a second. But here's the next graphic from the study that I just put up showing that resistance trained people uh, have a much higher physical health and functionality and brain health when they get into their older age. You can see that declining effort and you can see that those who are um, uh, less physical as you go down, uh, having doing less physical activity, their cognitive decline starts to decline much more severely and even can lead to disabilities or dependence on others for uh, basic functioning. Um, so that's why these things are important. Let me go, let's see, let me go ahead and uh, hide that one. Um, but let's let's dive into fat loss because a lot of people think, oh, oh, you you can't you know exercise away body fat. Well, well, that's actually not true. Um, one, yes, it has to go hand in hand with diet. You can't just eat every fattening food in the book and exercise your way out of that. No, that's not how it works. But let's take a look at the real clinical results, published results of what the difference is if you just use diet alone, if you use diet and aerobic activity, or if you use diet and uh, resistance training. So diet alone, or diet with exercise aerobic style, or diet with exercise resistance training. Let's take a look at what that. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the next study. Let's see. This is it. Oh, that's not it. That's a different one. Let me pull up the correct study here. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. Um, so diet and exercise. Let's take a look at this. So 70% of Americans now are overweight. 70%. That's, that's horrible. 42%, almost half of our population is clinically obese. This is putting you at great risk for diabetes. Probably the greatest indicator of diabetes is fat, body fat, uh, greater risk for cancer, uh, greater risk for heart attack and stroke. Um, so this study, the effect of exercise type during intentional weight loss on body composition in older adults with obesity. This is a 2017 study, 249 people in the study, 18 month long study. So a nice length of the study, a good group, not too small, 250 people in it. So let's take a look at what the results are that they found. So they found that this is the conclusion of the study that WL, which is the weight loss diet with RT resistance training results in less lean mass, that's muscle, lost compared to diet and aerobic training or diet alone. So this is interesting. You're losing less muscle when you use resistance training when you are losing body fat. So the key is you don't want to lose body fat and muscle because muscle burns calories. Now you're less effective at burning the calories and utilizing the calories and more of that can get stored as fat. So it's this yo-yo effect. So if you diet and diet hard, maybe even use aerobics training, you can actually lose some muscle. And then when you gain the weight back, you're gaining mostly body fat. Now you've just worsened your body composition because you have the same amount of body fat, but a lot less muscle to burn those calories. Now you can actually add fat even easier because eating the exact same amount of calories. And this is where people have real problems with that. So let's let's put up the results for diet alone and fat loss. So they lost 4.8 kilos or about 10% of 11% um, of muscle loss. So this is showing us, okay, diet alone, if you just really cut the calories, you actually can start losing muscle because the body says, wait a minute, we can't afford you know, muscle uses energy. And if there's less energy coming in, the body gets in protective mode and starts destroying or breaking down and getting rid of some of your muscle tissue and the weight loss. Not so good. Okay, so let's look at diet with aerobic training. 
Well, this increased the muscle loss even more, 16.4% muscle loss. Yikes. So what you're looking at here is when you add a weight loss or reduction of calories, calorie reduction to get you into a weight loss mode, and you add aerobic training, you actually lose a lot of muscle tissue. How much? Well, let's compare it to resistance training. So uh, in the re diet plus resistance training, they lost more fat and kept more muscle. So they uh, diet plus resistance training lost more fat than aerobics and uh, uh, diet or diet alone. Actually, 6.6 .6 pounds more of fat than diet alone. So when people say, oh, you can lose weight on diet alone, it's true, but you can lose a lot more in the same period of time, 16 weeks, you can lose 6.6 .6 pounds more by adding resistance training with it without losing that significant amount of muscle, 10.9% of muscle. So you're looking at here two times less muscle lost than aerobic training. So yes, aerobic training can help you get some of that body fat down, but it's also most likely going to burn body, uh, body muscle as well as body fat. And that's what you don't want because one, you end up losing strength. Two, that muscle actually burns calories. All right, so what does that mean? So about two and a half pounds of muscle distributed all over the body will burn about a pound of fat every single month. That means 12 pounds of fat will be gained if you're taking away that muscle because you could be eating the same amount of calories, but you don't have the same amount of body muscle. That muscle would be burning or utilizing some of those calories. That means those same calories, now that you've dieted and lost some of that body fat, will actually not be there to burn the calories and you'll have a more difficult time trying to keep that fat off. So really important. Let's take a look at the next study. Uh, and this one's on diabetes. Um, so, you know, it's clear the, um, uh, a group came out recently, a group of different physicians and doctors, uh, lifestyle medicine said that you can absolutely, without a doubt, lose, uh, get yourself through diet alone, specifically a plant-based diet out of uh, diabetes for type 2 diabetes patients, not type 1. So it was interesting in the study what they came up with. So this is, this is what they have. This is a little bit long, but I'm going to read it to you because it's important. So they found that um, they tried people with just uh, using the standard diabetes, American Diabetes Association's uh, weight loss and exercise, using moderate exercise like walking, uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes a day for three days a week or something like that. Well, they found it helped, but they found that about 60% of people were what they call non-responders. It wasn't enough. The diet and exercise program that the American Diabetic Association was, was touting wasn't enough for 60% of those with diabetes. Now, this is where it gets interesting because, oops, that's the wrong one. When they actually, uh, it's, it's too long to be on here. I'm sorry, I get cut off. But Anyway, I'll tell you the results. When they increased the amount of exercise, kept the diet exactly the same, but they increased the exercise intensity, made it more difficult, incorporated resistance training, then almost everyone saw a improvement in the diabetes um, uh, mechanisms. So this is really exciting just, to, just by not changing the diet at all, but just by adding that intense, more resistance style training, those people who were stubborn and not and being resistant against insulin resistance, if they use resistance training, I know that's a lot of resistance in one sentence, but um, if they used weight training for their diabetes, more people actually got out of it when it paired with, with a healthy diet. 
So this is some of the importance. You get better weight loss, you preserve the muscle, you get better improvements with diabetes just by using resistance training. And this is not found with other forms like aerobic or, or moderate style training. So the degree and the intensity of resistance training is important here too. The more strenuous, obviously within reason, you've got to find a program that works for you, for your age, for your lifestyle, where you're starting out. If you're brand new to exercise, do not try to uh, exercise with too much intensity. Otherwise you'd be really sore or you could injure yourself. So train smart and get somebody to help you with the, the appropriate level of training, but work up to that intensity slowly and allow your body to adjust to it to the point where you can really start getting maximal amount and optimal amount of health benefits. So let's dive into the next study. Um, that's the diabetes and cognitive decline. Here we go. So diet and exercise for cognitive decline. So this study is called the combined effect on physical activity and fruit and vegetable intake. So this is really cool because it's looking at, okay, plant we know plant-based diets. So let's take a look at those who had a high fruit and vegetable intake, more plant-based diets. The higher the plant-based, the better. And they looked at decreasing, decreasing cognitive decline. This is in Taiwan. Okay, so it was a good style study. There was over 4,000, almost 4,500 respondents. They are 53 years old, average, uh, and had a 16-year study. So really looking at long-term effects of this. So this is really cool. Now, they found that those who had the highest amounts of uh, high fruit and vegetable intake decreased uh, the cognitive decline by 40%, that's whoppingly good. <laughs> that's amazing that you can preserve your brain health, prevent cognitive decline by 40%. But what was really cool is the next sentence, the risk of decline decreased by 63% when physical, high physical activity and high fruit and vegetable intake were combined. And this is what I this is what I talk about all the time. When you combine a high intake of fruits and vegetables with that resistance training, high physical activity, 63% decrease in your risk of cognitive decline. That is senile dementia, Alzheimer's disease, that cognitive impairment where your brain just doesn't function as well. This is why exercise, especially resistance exercise. Let's dive into bone density. This one's great. Over 10 years, nearly two dozen cross-sectional and longitudinal studies have shown direct and positive relationships to bone density. And it's interesting in the study, it says both aerobic and resistance training exercise can provide weight-bearing stimulus to bone. Yet research indicates that resistance training may have a more profound site-specific specific effect than aerobic exercise. Now that's really important because they're pointing out right in this study that resistance exercise, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it off my page because it got cut off there. Resistance exercise, a more profound effect than aerobic exercise. and so this is this is what they go into next it says high intensity resistance training in contrast to pharmacological and nutritive approaches pharmacological meaning prescription drugs and nutrition meaning diet so better than diet or drugs alone the high intensity resistance training approaches for improving bone health in older adults has the added benefit of influencing multiple factors for osteoporosis by improving strength, balance, and muscle mass. So you can't get that, you know, those benefits from uh, drugs and diet alone. So this is why it's really important resistance training for bone density, for cognitive decline, for body fat, for diabetes. Resistance training over and over and over again shows added benefits where aerobic training or uh, 
regular exercise uh, forms just don't add up in the results. Lastly, I want to, to talk about this, which was pretty surprising to me. I didn't, I didn't expect such a, a profound effect, but here's the study for you guys out there on the study in suppression of prostate cancer in patients who followed exercise. So body weight, fat mass, and, and percent body fat were reduced with resistance exercise while percent lean mass increased, means lowering body fat by increasing muscle. And that is where you wanna go. And that's what resistance training does that aerobic training does not. The conclusion of this study, this study provides evidence for enhanced myokine expression. Myokines is what goes after and attacks and uh, can destroy cancer cells. So your cancer protective agents in the body. So this study provides evidence for enhanced myokine expression and tumor suppressive effects from serum uh, chronically exercised. Now this is really important that they say chronically. That means you are exercising regularly and with intensity using resistance training or weights. So this looked at prostate cancer patients and it said it's important as it may indicate why men even with advanced prostate cancer can physically, if they're physically active, don't succumb to the disease as quickly. And this is really important because if you don't, <laughs> if fortunately you don't die as quickly, it gives you greater opportunity to try to arrest uh, the disease, the prostate cancer in other ways. So just exercising could help men actually survive cancer, prostate cancer enough time to actually be able to reverse it like prostate cancer uh, treatments or removal of the prostate and save your life. Exercise can save lives. It's very clear by the research over and over that whether you're talking about brain health, heart health, diabetes, cancer even, um, and even body fat. And body fat or diabetes is one of the leading causes and indicators of most of the major disease states in the United States. This is why resistance training is so important, why it's so different than aerobic training or any other types of exercise. And that's why I'm passionate about getting people either to the gym or at home, doesn't matter. Resistance training can be with bands, with machines. If you don't like free weights, there's other ways to get resistance training in. Even body weight exercises can be very helpful um, depending on the type of exercise and the movement. Um, just getting that full on more strenuous, more intense, um, resistance style training can help maintain that muscle, maintain your body fat levels or reduce those body fat levels even more so than other types of exercise. I hope you enjoyed this one and showing how important resistance training can be. Come on, join the resistance. Get in there and get some resistance training. It can mean getting a couple of 10 pound dumbbells and working out at home. It can be meaning getting some bands or, or stretchy bands and work out at home or get to the gym and work out with free weights or, or machines. Get a coach if you're new to it, do it correctly, make sure you're not injuring yourself, but get some of that resistance training in because it has such a broad spectrum of health benefits. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be back again next week as we do every Thursday right here on Facebook, Clean Machine Live. Thanks for joining me.